Hey mandolin friends, David here. Today I want to show you a standard bluegrass fiddle tune called Billy in the Low Ground and it goes something like this. This is a pretty popular bluegrass jam favorite, and there's some great recordings out there as well. If you've been around the bluegrass scene for a while, you've probably heard this from some notable guitar players like Doc Watson, Clarence White, Tony Rice, and there are some great mandolin versions out there from Herschel Sizemore, David Grisman recorded this with Vince Gill, I believe, and uh, even the great Chris Steely did a version of this tune with Michael Days on their Sleep With One Eye Open record, although they did throw in some weird timing that we won't be going into here, just a disclaimer. <laughs> Today we're gonna look at a little bit more of a standardized version of Billy in the Low Ground, one that you might encounter at the jam session, but since this tune is so old, I think it dates all the way back to the early 1900s, there's tons of different strains of the melody out there and tons of room to put your own variations on this melody. So I encourage you to explore as we go through this lesson together. And as a little extra credit bonus, I want to show you a variation of my own where I'll take you through a version of the melody further up the neck just to give you some more options to choose from as a jammer and as an improviser. It sounds like this. <laughs> So let's dive right into it, and we'll start off by learning the chords and the form to this tune. So Billy in the low ground is in the key of C major, which is maybe a little less common than some other keys in bluegrass. And we have four chords that we're working with in this tune. So let's just review these for good measure. To start off, here's some easy open chord shapes. First up, you have C. Then we have A minor. Here's an easy one, G major. The last one's a bit tougher though. Here's an F major chord. Once you've got those down, let's graduate to those tougher chop chords that you might want to use at a bluegrass jam, starting with your C chop shape. A minor. G major. And for that F chop shape, I like to use the same shape we use for our open chord, but then use my pinky to mute that open A string in between strums. So now we're gonna line up those chords in order for our chord progression and check out the form to this tune as well. And for that, we're gonna come over to our transcription. And by the way, all the stuff you need to learn this tune is gonna be here on screen. But if you want the companion PDF transcription and chord charts for this one, you can grab it over on my Patreon page at the link in the cards above here. And try playing along with me here. To start off, we have two measures of your C major chord. Followed by two measures of your A minor. Then two measures of C again. Now one measure of A minor, quick G, back to C. So when you're playing this, you'd want to repeat that A section and then move on to the B section, which has a very similar chord progression. In fact, the only difference is we're replacing the A minor that we had here on measure three of the A section with an F major chord. So C major for two measures, then F major for two measures, Back to C for two. One measure on A minor. Quick G, back to C. Well, now onto the fun part of learning this melody together. And I think it's always good to listen before you play. So take this chance to listen down to this melody one more time. So we're in the key of C major, which means that we're gonna be using the C major scale. If you wanna brush up on what notes we have in this key signature, check out this other lesson on major scales that we have here on the channel. But when you're ready, let's jump in and we'll break things down into smaller two measure phrases, starting with the first two measures here. <laughs> 
So hopefully you can sift through all these notes and see your C major arpeggio being outlined really clearly with this melody. And all those other notes outside the arpeggio are just connecting notes or passing tones to get you to the next chord tone. So when you string it together, it sounds like this. The second phrase over the A minor chord starts off with a quick slide. And for that slide, we're using our ring finger on the D string from the 5 to the 7 with an open A string in the mix as well. And then we're following up that slide with a really quick upstroke on your open A. Just like that. Let's give this phrase a shot together. This third phrase is exactly the same as your first phrase. You know this one sounds like this. And the last phrase of the A section starts off with a slide as well, but ends a little bit differently. Those last two notes are ramping up for the repeat of the A section, but we'll stop there for now. See if you can play this last phrase with me. All right, now it's time to test our knowledge of this A section by stringing all those phrases together and playing the A section once through with these backing tracks that we have. So give it a shot. A one, two, three, four. So for the B section here, we're doing something a little bit different where we're playing most of the melody in what we call the second position. That's where your index finger camps out on the third fret of the fretboard and your other fingers reach up from there. But a thing to watch out for here is that we're also using some open strings. So be sure to pay attention to the finger numbers or the tablature to get the appropriate positioning for this one. And we start this section with the last two notes of the second ending on the A section here, where we're sliding up from your ring finger on the fifth fret to the seventh fret of the A string. Just like that. Add that on to our first two measure phrase and it sounds like this. So after the slide, you can see where we're using our open E string at the beginning of the measure, but using our index finger on the third fret and your middle finger on the second fret. Same thing on the A string for the second measure. Let's play all that together too. On the next phrase, we're reaching for the stars and grabbing the eighth fret with our pinky here on the E string. It sounds like this. For this phrase, we're not using any open strings, so be sure to finger it in closed position. Here's phrase number three now. Couple things to watch out for. Here at the beginning, we're playing kind of a rag style rhythm where we have an eighth quarter, eighth quarter. And for our right hand, we wanna make sure that we're playing that as down, up, up, down to line up with the beats in the measure. And then at the very end of this phrase, we're playing a hammer on triplet from the three to the five with your index and middle finger. We wanna make sure that we're playing a downstroke for the first two notes and then an upstroke to grab that last note of the triplet. This one's hard, but you got this. And then the last two measures of the B section are very similar to the last two measures of the A section with just a slight rhythmic variation here at the beginning. Again, those last two notes here are setting you up for the repeat of the B section here, but we'll stop there for now and just play this phrase together. Nice work, folks. We got through the second position together. Let's see if we can play all that with the backing tracks. Here's the B section. Well, now it's time for a little jam session here. We're gonna play through this whole tune now from start to finish, both A's, both B's. We'll have the backing tracks and the transcription here for you. So have fun with it. A one, two, three, four.
that's the whole tune. You're more than welcome to stop there. But for any of you mandolin junkies out there who just want a little bit more, here's the up the neck version of this same tune. Check it out. <laughs> moving this whole melody up the neck to what we would call the third position. That's where your index finger is now camping out on the fifth fret up and down these strings, and then you're reaching up from there with your other fingers. So no open strings for this version, and instead of all those open string slides that we were doing in the first version, now we're gonna be doing hammer-ons as kind of another embellishment to fill that place. All right, take a deep breath. Here we go, first two measures. All right, the hardest part for me is this little shift that we're doing at the beginning where we're playing our open G string, fourth fret with your index finger, and middle finger on the fifth fret. And then we're shifting up with your index finger to the fifth fret to get in that third position where we'll be staying for most of the tune afterwards. Let's try this out. On to phrase number two now. Another shift here at the end of the phrase from your five to the four with your index finger. Then we're gonna grab the seventh fret with your ring finger before we have to shift again in the next phrase. But for now, try this out. All right, again, remember the third phrase is the same as our first phrase, including this new shift that we have as well. Check this out. Well, that's pretty easy now. So let's move on to the last phrase of your A section, which goes like this. Just one more tiny shift there at the end where we're going from your middle finger on the seventh fret to your index finger on the fourth. So you can grab your fifth fret with your middle finger there. So when you're ready, let's check out the last phrase of your A section. All right, give this up the neck version of the A section a shot here, all together with that transcription and backing track. Good luck, Tess. <laughs> a one, two, three, four. Home stretch here, B section. We're still in the third position here, so let's check out this first phrase together. Remember the little pickup from the second ending? Now we're doing a hammer on from the five to the seven. Everything else you're just fingering here in this position. Moving on to the second phrase of the B section now. Lots of pinky action there, but don't worry too much, you got this. Moving on to phrase three. Don't forget that down, up, up, down, pick directions for that rag rhythm at the beginning. And then at the end of this phrase, we're doing something a little weird. I uh, threw in a cheeky rake at the end. A rake or a sweep is kind of a less common embellishment on the mandolin, but it's actually one of my favorites to do. So I threw it in here just for you guys, just for fun. And uh, if you've never done it before, it sounds like this. where you're dragging your pick across two sets of strings on an upstroke there. So to start off, we have a downstroke on the five on the A string, and then you're dragging your pick across the five and the 10 on the D string as well to get that nice sweeping sound. And when you put it back in context, it sounds like this. Last phrase, here we go. Watch out for that little shift at the end, but otherwise you got this, right? All 
Party Mantle and Friends, the real test is yet to come. Let's see if we can play through both A's and B's of this up the neck version with the backing track and transcription. Take your time, pay attention to those fingering numbers, the tablature, that's gonna be really helpful here. And um, let's see how it goes. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> Nice work, folks. Now you have another standard bluegrass fiddle tune under your belt and you're expanding your repertoire. You're expanding your possibilities for collaboration and jamming with other bluegrass musicians, which is fantastic. Great job. And if you like this lesson, I hope you'll check out some of the other lessons that you see here on screen. We have a bunch of other fiddle tune videos and a whole playlist of similar lessons that you can check out. And uh, if you want that PDF transcription, the chord charts, the backing tracks for this lesson, you can grab all that over on my Patreon page at the link in the description below here. I hope you'll check it out if you haven't already. And uh, thanks so much for all the support, the likes, the subscribes, you know the drill, and I'll see you in the next video.